For a special 90th episode, I'm joined by Nuno Gomes, one of the most recognizable faces in Portuguese sport and a true footballing legend. With more than 600 professional appearances for Boa Vista, Benfica, Fiorentina, Braga, Blackburn Rovers and the national team, Nuno scored more than 200 goals in a glittering career. We discuss, amongst other things, some of Nuno's career highlights, why he is so proud of Portugal and why Portugal is a country that consistently surprises people. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal The Simple Life and it's a real honour. I'm joined by a true Portuguese footballing legend, number 21, uh, Nuno Gomes. Nuno, hi, thank you for joining us. Hello, hello Dylan, hello everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to join the show, uh, so I hope you you guys enjoy it, uh, For sure. the show today. For sure. It's a pleasure, Nuno, thank you. Uh, we we I had to hire um, security, extra security to do the show. I have uh, work colleagues and family members that are trying to get into the building uh, <laughs> because uh, lots of people know who Nuno Gomes is. Um, I have some female uh, colleagues who know you who you are. Uh, very they 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 in love. Uh, one of them is my mother. I have some colleagues who are from Sporting. They want to get in the building for another reason. Um, okay. But maybe you can tell our, our, our foreign listeners, our international listeners, um, a little bit about you. Well, but uh, let them in because they we are we are far away from each other. So uh, I'm I'm not in danger, I believe. I'm worried by what the they'll way. do to me. I'm worried what they'll do okay. to my studio. And by the way, send my regards to your to your mother uh, from from me. Uh, well, I'm Nuno Gomes. Uh, I'm from Portugal. <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm 45 years old. I know I'm getting old. Uh, my hometown. I was born in Amarante, uh, up north, uh, a city uh, somewhere between Porto and Vila Real. It's uh, nowadays it's about 30 to 40 minutes by highway. From uh, from Oporto, um, a very pretty uh, city, small but uh, historical city that you, I don't know if you've been there before, but you should. And I invite everybody to at least once to to spend one or two days in in the city because it's it's really worth it. Uh, I'm uh, I'm married. I have uh, <clears throat> two kids, one uh, one boy with 11 years old, and one girl with uh, 22 years old already so uh, where I live I live uh, in, a, in a place in a, in a town called Cascais uh, is near Lisbon uh, 20 half an hour from from Lisbon depending on traffic uh, but it's a city that I that I like that I, that I love to live uh, because it's by the sea uh, is comparing to Lisbon is uh, more relaxed, more quiet. So we have everything here, and uh, and we still are very close to to the big city of uh, of Lisbon. Uh, so I guess it's everything about me. Uh, well, I'm at the moment um, professionally. I'm um, I'm doing uh, TV shows. Uh, once a week, we, we talk about uh, um, our our football league. Uh, during the weekend, sometimes uh, I do uh, Champions League games um, for for uh, for a TV channel here. And uh, I've been working for Benfica for 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 the last uh, the last years, but. Uh, since uh, two two years ago, I, I left, so I'm very much involved with um, with UEFA and FIFA, uh, with uh, a lot of projects uh, together, particularly in uh, in the youth football and uh, and the development of uh, of talent and the youth uh, youth football. I'm also do a lot of work in terms of. Uh, uh, managing uh, not on the pitch but outside the, outside the, outside the pitch uh, regarding uh, football uh, transfers uh, so I'm much uh, very involved at the moment 
uh, in a company that I own with my brother, uh, doing uh, football intermediation. Okay, so you you are a very very busy guy. You thought that you'd get uh, you'd you'd be less busy when you finish playing, but uh, but there were other surprises. Yeah, yeah. In fact, yes, it's true. I'm much more vi- busy now. Uh, but and I, I always knew that the times as a footballer were the best the best times of my life. So uh, I was right. <laughs> so Amazing. I miss I miss uh, I miss playing, of course. Uh, but life uh, goes on, and of course, I, I I'm very much involved in football and uh, a lot of things to do. And sometimes, um, 24 hours a day is not enough. <laughs> Well, um, Nuno, you, you must be up there with, with one of the most recognizable faces for in football for Portuguese. Uh, for our American listeners, we're talking about soccer. You know, the Americans, they, they, okay. they call it soccer. So let's just, soccer. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, to help our American listeners. Um, but I was surprised to learn that you, you're not from Lisbon. I always just imagined, I always just assumed that you're from Lisbon because you played for one of the biggest clubs in Lisbon or the biggest club actually. And, um, but you're from Amalante, as you mentioned. Uh, it, I haven't visited Nuno. It looks beautiful. Um, it is. What is it for famous sure. for? What do you want people to know about, about your hometown? Well, Amarante, it's a, as I told you, is a, is a small town, uh, but very, very beautiful. It's uh, very fast to get there from Oporto, uh, half an hour, one hour maximum, um, but it's very close. And it's famous, well, first of all, for uh, one of the uh, biggest painters in Portugal, the Amadeu Sousa Cardoso, is from, I don't know if you heard about, but he's from, oh. he's oh. from, he's from Amarante. There's a famous writer also, uh, mother of Miguel Sousa Tavares, Augustina Bessa Luis. She's from Amarante, a famous uh, writer. She, she, unfortunately, she, she passed away already. And uh, also a famous poet, Teixeira de Pascuais, also from Amarante. Wow. And, uh, and uh, I believe these three uh, are the, the iconic names of the uh, the Amarante city, uh, but after uh, you, if you if you ask someone in Portugal um, if they heard about Amarante, they will let they will for sure answer you about the bridge. Uh, the bridge very looks famous, amazing. Very very, very famous bridge, uh, San Gonzalo Bridge. Also, the church of San Gonzalo next to the bridge is very is very um, is very pretty uh, with the river underneath uh, Tamaga. It's the name of the of the rig the river, and uh, of course uh, a lot of famous restaurants because uh, the gastronomy uh, over there is fantastic. So another reason to visit because you you eat uh, and drink because the the wine is also very famous in in Amarante. You have a, a kind of a, a particular wine. It's okay. uh, uh, we call it in Portuguese verde tinto. It's a it's it's red, but is uh, um, the taste uh, seems like uh, uh, green, but uh, is very beautiful also. Uh, nice. Let's see uh, the 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 pastry, a lot okay. of a, lo- a lot of pastry and. Uh, is there a particular uh, one from your from your village? There's there's a lot. There, okay. there is a lot. Pa- pastry is. Uh, it's uh, the one that is more famous. I cannot mention here because it's uh, you Google it after you, you search for the suite of San Gonzalo. I don't know if you call it in, in English suite. It's a particular suite uh, named uh, San Gonzalo something, but is uh, 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 you, you will you will find it. Uh, I think I know. Internet. I think I know. I think I know the one you're talking about. And this is a family. It's a family podcast, yeah. so we have to be careful. Yes, yes. Okay. And and after 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 that one, there's a lot of famous uh, pastry uh, all over Amarant that you that you for sure will like uh, to get in and to and to grab something because uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, opportunities and different. The tastes um, for you to to enjoy. Amazing, amazing! I love the north. Um, my wife and I we we like to go up to the north quite often. Uh, we have some family in um, Val de Cambra, 
which is not too far from from there uh, and it's beautiful it's just completely it different and green and mm-hmm. and amazing and good wines vinho verde yeah. is like a is a wine that's bottled early uh, uh and and you have exactly. people always think it's the color of the wine but it's not it's because it's an early wine and you have red and white um so you're saying that amaranta is a, a very good red verde yeah exactly. interesting okay cool Exactly. Okay. You couldn't have a lot of pastries when you're a player up there in Amarant, not allowed. Uh, you otherwise you wouldn't be able to score the goals that you scored. Um no no must have been really annoying for Porto that they you were right there. They could have signed you. You were right there and and you went uh, you went the other direction. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's it was uh, in fact I I, I had some uh, during my career I had some invitations from Porto uh, okay. to to join to join them. Uh, and uh, of course, the, f- the f- first of of those invitations was when I when I was 14, 15 years old, and I was still playing in Amarante, and uh, uh, I was invited to go to 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 play for Porto uh, on the youth. Uh, but then I decided to 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 choose another another club in the city of Porto. I played for Boa Vista. Boa Vista, yeah. Boa Vista is from from Porto, but. Uh, in that time, um, I was ta- I was uh, uh, I was very young. Uh, my parents were a little bit concerned about me uh, moving away from uh, my hometown in order to go f- to a big city like Porto alone without them. And uh, b- but at the end, I I, I reached uh, to convince them, and and they. They they accept to 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 let him to let me go, and uh, but I choose Boa Vista because uh, a friend of mine that was playing with me in Amarante uh, was invited also. So okay. uh, we went we went together, we went together, uh, and me instead of going alone for 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 for, for Porto, uh, I accept uh, to go to join Boa Vista because. Uh, I was moving with a, a friend of mine that I already knew for for the for since I was a, a child. So we we went together for Boa Vista. So I stay I stay in Boa Vista for uh, around six seven years before okay. join join Benfica in Lisbon. But okay. uh, during that time in in Boa Vista, Porto uh, approached uh, some some sometimes. But uh, I think it was uh, uh, it was meant to be uh, for me, uh, uh, Benfica. It would be difficult to imagine you in in a in a blue and white shirt. Uh, mm, in, for me too. <laughs> instead of red. Um, but uh, let's just quickly go back to 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 Boa Vista because that was an incredible time for that club. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Nuno, that was the last time that they won the the league. And not long after all of that, they, they even weren't in the Premier League for the Portuguese Premier League for a long time. Um, tell us about that. Your, some of your highlights there. And you played with Jimmy, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, if I'm not mistaken, did, as well. I Amazing. Did, I did. Yeah, I did. I, well, uh, as I told you, I joined, I joined uh, under seven, under 16 team. So I stayed for three, three seasons before I reached the first team. And then I played three more years in the in the first team, and one of the one of the ah, it was my last season in Boa Vista in the first team. Uh, we played together, me and Jimmy. He was playing before here in a in a lower team in the in the first league. Then he, he he transferred to to Boa Vista, uh, and then in that year we won the, the 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 cup. Boa Vista won the cup. We won the cup in Portugal. And after the, the the season finished, we we left. I went to Boa Vista, and Jimmy moved to Leeds United at that at that time. He yeah. we, he was very very good very good player. I still have contact with him. We we are good friends, and uh, and we we at the field uh, we we combine very well, and we we. We did uh, an amazing season with Bovista that year. Well, you were two two quite different types of players. Um, he was a very sort of uh, you know strong, aggressive type of of centre forward. And uh, yeah, and, I was. And I you was were the like, link. Uh, you go and fight with them, and I I, I will I will I'll take pass the you ball the ball. After. <laughs> 
clever. It's a clever strategy. I mean, uh, he was a beast. He was a beast. Yeah, um, he was. L- let's uh, let's talk about Benfica uh, because everyone knows you for for your time there. Uh, you had two you had two times at the club. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the football because uh, the podcast is about about Portugal. But first of all, uh, 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 to for people listening uh, from all over the world, football is a massive part of our culture here. Um, how would you describe that to to uh, uh, someone coming for the first time and describe w- what role football plays in our lives and 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 how it's so central to our, our culture here in Portugal? Well, uh, I can I can talk by my personal experience regarding football. Of course. Uh, I was I, I did a career on football, but I believe that if you ask, uh, I, I will say ninety percent or ninety five percent of the kids, uh, even nowadays, uh, if you ask the question, "What do you want to do when you grow up?" they will they will they will answer you that they want to to be a football player. They still um, also I think a little bit changing. Uh, in those in, in these days, because a lot of uh, different solicitations. But in the past, uh, for sure, uh, most of the kids they will answer that, and, and I was one of them. Uh, and um, because football for 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 us, uh, it's a matter. It's a passion. Uh, it's a passion. It's cultural. Um, the 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 rivalry. Uh, between clubs also uh, it's uh, sometimes uh, pushed to the limits and um, I believe it's uh, it's like uh, in, in the history of, of the country uh, we had uh, of course Benfica uh, won uh, the, the, you call it we call it now Champions League but Benfica won twice. Uh, in the in the sixties, uh, even with Eusebio, it's one of the biggest names of our of our football. And uh, I always uh, grew up uh, looking at football and listening first at the radio because there wasn't no TV at home. <laughs> but then with TV and in the streets with the, with the, with the, with my friends. And uh, of course, uh, at these days, it's not easy to find uh, kids in the streets playing football, but because there's the academies, the soccer schools, and things are a little bit changed uh, regarding, for example, the, the security of the, of the kids uh, uh, going alone uh, in the streets. Um, but uh, uh, football is like fado, you know. For for us, it's a, it's a, uh, is uh, is growing with us uh, since the day that we are we are born. Because uh, someone in the family is crazy about football, and he will uh, pass uh, that uh, that uh, craziness for for you. Amazing. Okay. Um... For people listening, uh, just to give people a, a, a dissection here, Nuno. So the main, three main clubs in 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 Portugal is Porto, as we've mentioned, uh, Benfica, yeah. who you played for. Benfica and Porto have a very very fierce uh, rivalry. Um, it's true. They don't like and each sporting. other. Yeah, and then you have Sporting. But uh, I believe that Benfica Sporting, the rivalry is is worst. Okay. Okay. Because they are the, from the same city, and uh, yeah, uh, in the past, Benfica Sporting the rivalry was uh, historically the, the 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 most rivalry is Benfica Sporting. But of course, Porto, uh, in the last uh, two or three decades uh, already, they got uh, very strong. They they are they are doing very well, and they and they and they. Uh, it's more, uh, of course, there is a Benfica Porto rivalry, but it's, uh, I, I don't like to, to use uh, this expression because I, I don't think it's fair and I don't think uh, that we should uh, discuss uh, this uh, issue because it's more north and south. No? The, the, 
because Porto is from north and Benfica yeah. is from is from south. Uh, but uh, I always say I always say that we are a, we are so small as as a country that uh, that discussion is uh, is not is not doesn't make really sense. fair. It doesn't make sense because yeah. we are we are so so small comparing to to other uh, to other countries. But uh, you know uh, they say that in north. Uh, people work, and in South, uh, people enjoy life. Well, that's why we don't have a very good football team from the South of of Portugal. You know, the the Algarve. Um, there's there's yeah. there's no there's there's yeah. no real team there. But um, no, no. I mean, I'm a I'm a sporting supporter. I have to I have to be honest with you. I'm sporting. I chose. You know, many people tell me I chose badly when I moved to Portugal, and I, I chose the wrong the wrong team because for. Many years I watched the other, the red team have a lot more <laughs> success than the green and white team. Um, but there's no denying the success and the history and um, the enormous um, following that Benfica has, not only in Portugal, but in the world. Uh, and you were one of the most well-known faces and, and important players for Benfica. Um, tell us about this club. What is so special about this club? It's It's deeply ingrained in the Portuguese culture and in all over the world, in in Africa, in Brazil, um, what is so special about this 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 football club? As I've, to, I've told you about Eusebio already, and I believe that uh, Eusebio was one of the one of the reasons also that uh, Benfica uh, historically and nowadays have a lot of supporters uh, everywhere, um, and and. Uh, is is about that is to have supporters where wherever the team goes, uh, you will find a Benfica uh, supporter uh, because you know we have as a Portuguese we have a lot of immigrants also uh, all over the world, and uh, and if you have if you have Portuguese uh, on uh, on a country, uh, probably you will have Benfica fans if they are Portuguese, <laughs> you will have. Uh, a percentage of those of those they 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 for sure they they support Benfica. So uh, for me, it was uh, it was an amazing experience and um, it was like a, a, a dream uh, coming true from my childhood to play for Benfica and to to and to feel uh, in person that uh, that support uh, all over in Portugal is amazing. Wherever the team goes to play away. Um, the stadium is uh, uh, for sure more than half uh, full of Benfica fans, and uh, even abroad, uh, uh, I remember we one game we play we played against um, we played against Lille in Paris, and the state uh, we played in Paris because Lille, uh, I think the, their stadium was uh, suspended or. Something like that, but the game was in Paris, and uh, and the, the stadium was full of uh, Portuguese uh, uh, crowd and Benfica fans, and uh, we were in Paris playing at home. Um, so uh, it, that passion that people that follow Benfica everywhere, not only in football, but uh, Benfica is a, a big club that has more than football. It has more than thirty. Other, uh, how do you how do you mention in England mo mo modalities? Yeah, like different sports and, 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 and activities. Different sports, basketball, sport, uh, uh, handball, uh, futsal, uh, hockey, patins. Okay, okay, but judo. Mm -hmm. Talma Monteira. Judo, exactly. Talma She's Monteiro, Benfica. Athletics, uh, a lot of sports and a lot of Benfica Benfica fans everywhere. I've been, I mean, I've been to I've been to games uh, for Benfica. I went to Stade de Luz to see Benfica against Manchester United when Ferguson was still was still there. Uh, we won, a, no? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we won. Yeah, or, we yeah, won again. yeah. It was a great, uh, it was a great, uh, great, great, great game, an amazing moment. Um, I've been for a couple of other games. I have been for Sporting Benfica, uh, and uh, never. You've been. 
Yeah, in in Stade Luz, and uh, it was a heartbreaker because uh, Sport uh, Benfica scored two goals in the last like five minutes or six okay. minutes. Uh, it was a. Uh, I don't want to admit in public that I cried, but I maybe, you know, maybe a little tear. Um, but it is an amazing club. And, and I just think um, the impact that the club has in the in the community in Lisbon, it's a beautiful stadium and the facilities around there is just something phenomenal. So it's a, it is something that I, that I think is a, is a beautiful, a beautiful. Because it, but but it's, I think it's cultural because if you go to speak with the Porto fans or sporting fans, they, they always feel the same about their club. It's uh, it's a uh, uh, and 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 uh, I believe is uh, I think even them they will answer like me. They, it's it's hard to explain by words what mm -hmm. what's the feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is a there is a, um, a one of the things that I do appreciate about the football here in Portugal, Nuno. And maybe it's something that you can you can talk about. Um, it is something that's for the whole family. Uh, you never feel going to even the biggest games that it's not safe to take the children uh, or to take your your grandparents or to take the old people. Um, it is something that is truly a family event. Uh, um, I know we've had some moments in the past, but you know, so is everybody. But it seems yeah. in general that it's very safe and, and it's a good it's a good place to take your kids to go watch a game and to enjoy. Yeah, it's true, and and the the the, the families they it's also a, it's also a family a family thing that uh, some most of the times you press uh, you you press the feeling of uh, of uh, being a supporter of the club to your kids and then to your um, grandsons and uh, uh, sometimes is it, it's. Uh, it's very beautiful to to see at the stadium uh, a whole family uh, watching together the the game, and of course that uh, some episodes that uh, occur already in the past that we are not proud to see in the in the stadium, but unfortunately uh, some situation happens uh, not only here but in other countries uh, also that people don't. Uh, uh, don't know how to how to behave, uh, but I think uh, nowadays is 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 better that situation, and we can see uh, in the stands a lot of families together and enjoying the the, the moment. Um, I mean, you played with some you you played with some amazing amazing players at your time at at Benfica. Um, I don't want to list all of them because my sporting friends will get will get upset with me. But mm. Rui Costa, for example, what an amazing amazing player! Uh, he was one of my favorite players from 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 early on. Um, he's now the president of the club, and he's now your he's now the president he's and doing president an amazing job. He's had to clean up a bit of a mess, but uh, it's, yeah. it's 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 good. it's good. It's on the right track. It start it start well. Yeah. What what were some of your highlights uh, a club uh, for playing for Benfica that you can that you can take us through? Well, I'll, I will have to. I will have to say, of course, uh, um, the leagues that that I won and the titles that I won, uh, those were the the, the most uh, important years. Of course, that I I I recognize it one of the best moments. The first one, uh, it was uh, special because it was the first, and then and and because. Uh, Benfica was, uh, I think, almost ten years without without winning uh, the title. So uh, because in the early, even before two thousand and the early, uh, the early of two thousand one, two thousand two, two thousand three, um, that that time over there, uh, the club was a little bit in a, in a difficult situation in terms of not only results at the pitch but, but all, also in the uh, in the political management side so uh, we were like ten, almost 10 years without without winning a title that is is too much time for a club like Benfica and finally we won in, in 2000 2004 2005 uh, and uh, and it was really special Giovanni Trapattoni was the coach uh, uh, historical 
uh, name of football uh, worldwide. Yeah, and, amazing. Um, it was it was a, an amazing atmosphere, and it was special also for me because uh, guests were uh, we were playing the last game of the of the, the of the league, uh, the game that gave us the title. Uh, uh, it was in Boa Vista, so it was a Boa Vista oh, Benfica wow. game in the club that uh, I, I I I grew up as a as a player also. So it was special also because of that, the coincidence uh, of football to give me the first title with Benfica in the in the in the stadium that I uh, that I start to to be a, a football player. Amazing. Amazing. Um, playing for the, the, the national team, um, what did that mean to you, uh, playing for, for Portugal? It's everything. It's, a, it's, um, it's also a feeling. I think it's a, I, I was lucky enough to play for the national team since my 50. So uh, 15. So uh, under 15, I, I, I okay. joined the... the the national team under 15 uh, so i i went through all the process until uh, become a, um, a portuguese international player in the first team uh, i did under 15 16 17 80 uh, 9 at the time 19 uh, we, we we had uh, uh, the world cup in qatar uh, in 95 under 20 uh, so I did the Euro uh, under 21. Uh, I was champion, uh, Euro- European champion uh, with uh, with Portugal in under 80, uh, uh, under 18, and uh, and after I joined the first team, the first team, and uh, at the, and there's always the, that uh, that sense of that feeling of uh, uh, playing for your country. You are. Uh, with the colors of your flag, of your uh, home country, and uh, it's uh, uh, for me was the the the, uh, the highlight of my career, and the the the, uh, the top of the pyramid uh, was to playing for uh, for Portugal, and um, and of course playing uh, as I did in the in the big big competitions as the World Cup or. Or the the Euros, uh, I did uh, three Euros and two World Cups, and uh, of course uh, the Euro 2004. Um, oh. It's uh, it it was a, a mix of feelings. No, we, it's a, it's a memorable for for I, I believe for the players, of course, but also for the the the. Uh, Everybody and the people that were involved, and, yeah. and for all the country and for all the visitors that uh, spent that month here in Portugal, uh, it was, uh, I think, a, a football party uh, all over all over the country, and uh, everybody uh, for sure that remember where they were with who. Uh, I remember what where I was doing. Yeah. And uh, and um, it was amazing. Uh, it was really amazing. But uh, we missed the final, the final, you know, the final spot to to win it. Uh, uh, we reached the final, but we we couldn't won it. But uh, but it was amazing anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not even yeah. going to. I'm not going to even pretend I cried. Uh, it was uh-huh. devastating. Uh, that was an amazing uh-huh. thing. I remember where I was. Uh, I remember where I was when we beat England, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I with, mean, with some 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 uh, crazy situations happening during during that game against England, uh, our goalkeeper defending a penalty kick without the gloves. <laughs> yeah, uh, crazy. And then uh, he was the goal scorer of the last the last penalty. penalty. Kick, our Incredible. goalkeeper score. Uh, that was penalty. Eduardo, right? No, Ricardo. Ah, uh, Ricardo. Sorry, Ricardo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ricardo. Incredible. Played, uh, He's also he, on TV. He played, He's he, also on TV sometimes. He played. He played for uh, for Leicester in England. Also, that's right. 
Yes, he, he was on TV at the moment. He, he yeah. left. He is is working on the Portuguese FA uh, as a okay. goalkeeper coach now. And uh, yeah, that the, the 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 beginning of Cristiano Ronaldo also in, in, in the international level. Uh, he, he he was his first hero for uh, for Portugal and he scored uh, I think one or two or two or three goals. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was uh, special for us. But uh, I think we at the end we were proud of what we reached, not only Even. in the pitch, but uh, also as a uh, outside uh, uh, organization country. Uh, yeah. I, I believe that uh, everybody who visited us uh, was uh, very impressed with that. Uh, well, with look, that you know. I, th- I think there were a couple of things that happened at that time. One, first of all, everybody associated with Portugal was proud of that moment, even though the result wasn't what what we were expecting uh, or hoping. Um, it was it was phenomenal. I think also, you know, everyone had their doubts about whether Portugal could host the tournament and exactly. if everything would be ready and everything was perfect and beautiful and really well yeah. done. And then there were other things. I, I've read a lot of um, uh, articles and, and watched a lot of shows since then about how we kept um, sort of the crowd violence under control, and there wasn't a lot of dramas in the in the streets because of the way the Portuguese yeah. police handled the yeah. English yeah. fans, yeah. and 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 that was that made me proud as well that we we went through a tournament like that very very peacefully, which I think is something that's so uniquely yes, and typically portuguese uh, that and that makes me even more proud sometimes of the even of the results so um yeah. but one of my favorite moments of you as a player nuno was actually against england uh you scored a, a really great goal um where uh, Rui costa passed you the ball uh the that was first zero touch, 2000 yeah the zero, first touch looks 2000. like it was a bit clumsy but in the end it was perfect because it took you just past i think adams was the yeah, defender adams, yeah uh, was that one of your your big highlights, or, or what were some of your highlights? Of, yeah, uh, and this, even if you, even because it it was my first goal for the national team, that goal in, for the first uh, first team, of course, uh, of Portugal, it was my first Euro, my my first my first goal, uh, and it was a, a very good moment because that goal uh, allowed us to win the three points uh, in a game that we we were losing two nil. Uh, in the first 20 minutes and we were like thinking about uh, in 20 minutes we are losing 2-0 uh, what is going on uh, I, I think it's better to finish <laughs> to finish uh, fast the fast uh, quickly the game uh, otherwise they will beat us hard but uh, uh, one of the secrets of that game was that we were kept uh, the previous the previous uh, orientations that uh, were supposed to 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 follow and uh, we 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 believed uh, that uh, we were uh, doing uh, well and we were uh, going the right direction and uh, uh, you know when when it, when a team is losing 2-0 in the in the, in the first 20 minutes sometimes the coach uh, can uh, can have some decisions that uh, allow the team to to improve, or but the coach didn't uh, didn't change nothing, and he, he believed that we were doing uh, well, and we were doing well. But England scored the, um, twice in the, in two occasions that uh, that they created. Uh, but we 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 were strong enough to don't uh, felt and don't uh, and and we I, I think it's uh, um, one of the things that uh, uh, defines uh, even the, the 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 people of Portugal. You know, we always believe that we are capable. Uh, we never give up. Uh, until the end and the uh, resilience no so i think um, that game is a, is a uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it's a, it's a game that we we showed uh, that we we were believing that we are doing the correct thing 
and uh, we keep keep going uh, without giving up. Yeah, I mean, um, I think this is something where where and it's something that I wanted to do, to ask you and, and and get your opinion on. Um, I, I always say Portugal surprises people, uh, and and we see this in our sport. Uh, you know, you were that that was a surprise. No one was expecting expecting that England was supposed to be. You know, England always got this reputation as this this team of of, of superstars. Um, and I, and I think you know a lot of the the players that you played with, and we'll get into that, were superstars as well. But they, but but Portugal always seemed to surprise people, and there was always that you you always think about those moments in Portuguese sport uh, where we didn't give up. You know, the Euros where we won in France. Um, mm. Ronaldo goes off the field, but the team scores yeah. uh, and yeah. wins in Paris. You know, uh, yeah. that moment with we you a, and, yeah. and the team against England. Uh, uh, Ricardo without his gloves. These moments, yeah. we remember these things. Uh, and, and I mean, what do you think in our culture that we just don't stop? We don't quit. We keep going, uh, even when yeah. the world has, has given up. I think it's it's we have more examples of that not only in in football uh, but uh, we ha- I think it's it's uh, it's cultural uh, because even we, if we are a small country comparing to to other countries in Europe uh, we always produce talent uh, in in. Um, in uh, not only in, in 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 football or not only in sports, in other areas of of uh, of the society of uh, economic uh, uh, singers, writers, uh, poets, uh, we have a lot uh, a lot of talent everywhere, and um, yeah, we are small, but we but we have talent, and uh, uh, and we have that extra. That is uh, the belief uh, of uh, reaching the dreams, and to to believe that is possible if we work hard and if we if we are resilient and if we don't uh, give up. So that's why uh, sometimes the rest of the world are surprised with us because they look at us in the in the in the map and they see a, a, a small country. How how uh, is possible Portugal? As a small country, to 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 have uh, a lot of success in in, uh, in some different areas. It's true. Yeah, I agree. Perfect. Um, no, no, one more thing uh, about football. Um, you've played with some incredible, incredible players over the years. Uh, some of my favorites were your with the central defenders that we've had. Because uh, that was my position at, at, at sport was central defender, uh, so you know Cortu and and Andrade and ah, there's just so many so many good good players. But Ricardo, then you've got Ricardo Carvalho. Ricardo Carvalho, Carvalho was incredible. Ricardo Carvalho is from, I mentioned him because he's from Amarante, my hometown. Is he from Amarante? Yeah. I, say, yeah. I like him even more. I like him <laughs> even more. Incredible! What a great player. Um, yeah. And then you know you've got you know you, we spoke about Rui Costa we've spoken you know you had Deku um, as well you Figo. played with, with Deku yeah. Figo how can I forget Figo yeah. um, don't forget Figo Simao Sabroso uh, just so many yeah. good players and of course Ronaldo you you, you saw him start um, and you mentioned earlier on in the interview that you're part of um, uh, with the future development of the game we're seeing some really good players coming through as well now with like um, yeah we still have Bernardo Silva now Bernardo at the Sil- moment João Felix Jota uh, Jota from Liverpool we have a lot of we have as I told you and the, and you will keep uh, watching young Portuguese players coming up because um as I told you, we have a lot of a lot of talent, and from from a certain point, um, the clubs and the Portuguese FA uh, they recognize and they uh, they start uh, working, uh, directioning the, their politic to the to the to the grown and develop of uh, young young uh, players. So they were. Uh, helping them and giving them more tools uh, and uh, better conditions, uh, not only for the players but 
also for the clubs in, in terms of infrastructures and uh, and uh, education of the coaches, for example, mm -hmm. in order to 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 give uh, the young players the the best the best environment in order for them to grow even 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 better. So uh, you will continue to to watch and see uh, for sure a lot of Portuguese uh, talent. The future is bright, for sure. Amazing. I have no doubt. Uh, Nuno, what, what makes you proud of, uh, of Portugal? Uh, what makes me proud? I think I already, I already told you, I think um, to be, a, to be a, a small country comparing to, to others uh, in Europe, uh, of course in Europe, because we, we are part of Europe, uh, and to, to produce a lot of talent in, in uh, a lot of different areas of our society and uh, and of course uh, the beauty of uh, of our of our country we we are small but we have everything that uh, that uh, a person needs to to live well and to enjoy life and to uh, in 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 very uh, very uh, different areas also depending of your of your wishes or, or what you like to do but we have uh, everything we have the sea uh, beautiful beautiful sea beautiful cities uh, near near the, the most beautiful beaches in in uh, in the country i live in cascais uh, you you should know i don't know if you, i think you know cascais you live you lived here, no, before? Or yeah, not? yeah, I visited Cascais uh, a lot. Uh, and Cascais, it's uh, near the near by the sea. It's an amazing place, uh, and we have uh, we have sun, <laughs> a lot of sun most of the time. We have uh, beautiful landscapes uh, for every different uh, ways of uh, enjoying life. You know, we have uh, from north to south. Uh, even interior or, or by the coast, uh, we have a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of things to visit. And for sure, people after they they visit the house, they they want to return. And we have the island also. Açores is amazing. Uh, Madeira, uh, it's uh, it's also very beautiful. And uh, for uh, especially for those who like. Uh, uh, you know the tourism, the nature to enjoy the uh, the nature of uh, of tourism, and to, uh, uh, we have everything for every uh, type of uh, of person or every every kind of uh, of uh, of wish. Amazing. Okay, I I I I, I want to wrap this up, Nuno. You need to go soon to to comment on Benfica against uh, Barcelona. Yes. Today so, but met. first, first thing that I want to do uh, just before we finish is to thank you because you you made my mother very very happy one day back in the time was the first of December two thousand and eighteen, uh, and that's okay. you and her on a plane, oh, flying somewhere amazing. and. And she was an amazing, she was a huge fan of yours and she managed to get a photo with Which you. Which year? You mentioned the year? Which year? 2018. Okay. Yeah. Not, yeah. Long ago, so, not long ago. No, no, no. So you still look, I mean, you look good, you know, you look... Uh, well, I look years. younger. I, you look... We've been, <laughs> I, I've been uh, almost a year locked down at home, so it was crazy for everybody. But thank you for, you made her so happy that day. Um, Send my regards again to your I mother. will, I will. Thank you. Nunu, uh, a question that we ask all of our guests. Portugal, mm. the simple life, why? The simple life, um, because we, uh, we have everything. As a country, we, we can give you as many as options as you as you want uh, so uh, we are small as a country but we have uh, a big heart uh, to help and to warm uh, people uh, that uh, come to visit us and uh, most uh, of the people that come they want to return and some of them they don't live 
anymore for me. <laughs> they would, they stayed and choose to live forever here. Yeah, like me. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Nunu, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's time for me to say, no? <laughs> Let you call it. That's a wrap. So thank you once again to Nunu and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Forza, welcome to the simple life.